everyone and welcome back to my video. This is Ruth Ann and you've reached Ruth Ann's Creations Market Update. I was so nervous about this. Not this video, but this market. The big, big market. So, um, I have no car vlog because I sat in the back seat and Khaleesi and I talked and we I crocheted for a little bit and then we kind of like tripped it off to sleep so we got to it we got to the hotel and uh we went to walmart first then we got bath bombs so khaleesi wanted to have a bath so she got bath bombs and colored soap like foam soap so that took an hour and a half out of my life uh because she doesn't like to sit in the bath in the bathroom by herself so i sat and played my phone games while she was in the tubby and then we watched TV and I crocheted a little bit more, but I was just like so nervous for the show that I, I was crocheting it and not even paying attention. So there was that. So we didn't get up at 2.30 when my husband had to get up to go help his mom. We actually, my husband came back to get us at 6 and then we went and got a bagel from her favorite bagel place. They make French toast bagels, hot with butter, syrup, powdered sugar on them. Cleasy likes it with cream cheese, as do I. So we got that. We went to the craft show. My husband already brought in my booth. Now, my husband are packed the car as well. So I look at the table, and all there is is my long Tupperware tote and my two bins. And then that big basket that I had up here, nothing else nothing else I had no keychain holder I had no shelving I had nothing didn't even bring tables it was tables there so I got myself some tablecloths and I dumped everything out not only that my big long tote had a big hole in it now I don't know how that happened so I put the the long Tupperware tote on top with a um, a table, um, a tablecloth over it. And then I, I had my bigger toads that are flip top bins. I had those upside down and I put tablecloths over that. And, uh, so that's all I had. So I didn't have, I had a styrofoam head, head, but that was it. You know, I didn't have anything to put my hats on. Nothing. Do you see where this is going? So I set up to the best of my ability. Which my booth looked horrible compared to all the other vendors that were there. I had a setup video. I set up my camera. Never pressed record. So an hour later I said, ooh, I could fast forward that and put it on my channel. Nope, never hit record. So, what I noticed about the show is that there were four other crocheted plushy people there. There's about 175, 160 something vendors there. It was a really nice craft show. I mean, there was there was people. There must have been eight, nine thousand people that walked through. Um, I asked her, you know, how many people walked through, and she said between eight and nine thousand. That's great. I mean, it was busy. Two things I take away from this market. Now, when you come inside, I was the very first booth, like right inside the door to the right. Now, in the spring, I like to be there with my embroidery machine because it's like a little cubby. And I could put my embroidery machine there and I do bunnies and I um, embroider the ears for the kids for Easter. And I like that spot. But what I noticed is that it's only a good spot for that because I've been going in that spot and people know I'm there. When you're the first person inside a very crowded hall and they turn the corner and they see you, all I heard 80% of the day was, let's look around and see what else there is. So in the future, I'm going to ask to not be there and be out. But there was four other vendors there and they had, um, like I had my chickens, they had different chickens. I, one late crochet lady sold out, another one did okay. We had similar 
but different, if that makes sense. Like, my chickens were $10 and they were the Mabel chickens. I'm not sure what the other person had, but their beaks were different and they were a little bit bigger. And I don't know the price. Another lady had crocheted hats, like character hats, the Simpsons, the Cookie Monster, and they were really nice. Uh, I didn't have anything like that. So, I mean, I do have my list of everything I sold. Overall, it was a good, it was a good market. I think that had I had my full display, I would have, like, you know, just set up. This way I was only, like, on two tables spread out. I wasn't really, like, I look like a flea market is what I'm going to say, or like a tag sale. Even though I know I wasn't, it's just, it was disappointing. I think that... If I had two things, if I had my full display and I could set up properly, I would have done better. If I was the only cra crochet vendor, I would have done phenomenal. Even if there was like two or three of us, but there was five of us. Please, five. So, whatever, let's have a sip of coffee. So, I have everything I sold. Um, and now I'll go through it. These are in, uh, really no particular order. What I did was I wrote the name of the thing and then put a mark next to it. And if I sold another one of those things, I put a, a mark it next to it. So I will tell you the name of the item and what I sold it for and how many I sold. And at the end, I will give you my total plus the credit card fees. And, and then I want to talk about one thing that I do sell that I have actually had uh, questions on. So let's go through it. My rattles, I sell for $20. I sold five of those. I have little stick flowers. Uh, they're like the, the um, they're like the magnets, only I put a little, like a little wire on them so they're stick ups. I sell those for $6. I sold six of them. I sold two hanging plants for $10 each. I sold one, my yellow frogman. I said didn't really look like a frog. He's my only frog I have. He sold for seven. I sold seven keychains. And those are my little tiny, tiny octos I made into keychains and little bumblebees. And I think I sold a frog one. So I didn't write down which keychains, only that I sold seven of them. I sold three of my hats, which were... Uh, one of them was a blue and white toddler size hat with little ear flaps that came down. And then I braided the sides where you would tie it. I sold that one. I sold my um, purple ninja dude. He was the only ninja hat I had. And then I sold one teddy bear, which is a beaming style hat. Again with the ear flaps, the braids coming down. And then I made my own eyes and stuck them on there. I sold three catnip toys. Oh, my hats are $15 each. I put all hats at $15. That way it evens out. So if, say you had a hat that took you 20 minutes longer than the other hat. But the first hat is super simple. So it only took you 10 minutes. So you're going to charge, you know, that, that harder pattern. You might want $5 more. But in my opinion, I find that middle spot because... Like, for the, the little blue toddler hat, I got $15 for that. Took me maybe half an hour. But I sold the Ninja Turtle hat, which might have taken me a little bit longer. But I sold that one for $15, too. So, between the two of them, I got $25. You know, in my opinion, it doesn't make sense now they say it out loud. But in in my opinion, if they say, see, that all hats are different, are, are the same price. I don't know. Anyway, so I sold my cat and toys for $3. I sold three of those. Those are those little tiny cats I made full of cat in that I made a mess. I sold one cat for $12. I had three little tiny turtles. This was two sea turtles and one the land turtles from the Southern Gals Crochet. I sold those three for $15 each. I sold one mushroom. That was the yellow topped one. And that was $10. I sold four chickens for $10 each. I sold... I'm sorry. Chickens were 15 Yeah, they were $10 each. $10 each, I'm sorry. 
I sold um, a rainbow bee for $12. I sold a miniature bee that was $10. I sold my land turtle, which is also um, Southern Gals Crochet. I sold that for $25. I had the backpack buddies, which were the little tiny bears that the kids could create. I had some leftovers, so I had six. I sold all six. Those were $3 each. I sold two regular sea turtles, regular size, for $25 each. I sold my orange oxalato guy for $15. He was the one that was part of the what can I do with an orange skein of yarn. I sold my the red and green squid that I made. I sold one of those, the red with the green, excuse me, the red had one. I sold for 25 and then I sold a blue one that I had that I finished up, things I finished up. I sold that one for 25 as well. I sold my big giant bee that was the only big bee I had left for 15 And then three of my knitted dishcloths that I just kind of pull out as stuff sells. I sold four of those for $3 each, so that would be $12. I can tell you that the big bee, I only had one. And... It sold almost right away, so I could have sold more. The other vendors, one other vendor had red and white ones for Christmas. Those were 25 and another vendor had them for, I want to say 20 or 25 And they were almost as big as my one. So, so I, re I use Zettel because... I ordered the square. I have the square. It's all set up. My inventory's in there. I I um, went to go. I got my charger in the mail. My little swiper. I put it in my bin. I get to the craft show. Guess what? It's for Apple. I don't have an Apple product. So, but my husband does. And he said, next time, use my phone. So, I used Zettel. So, in Zettle for credit cards, it was a total of $97 in credit cards. The fee was $3.11, and they were eight sales on Zettle. I had $4.45 in cash, so my total was $542 for the day. That wasn't that bad compared to how many of us vendors there were doing the same thing. Um, my... I. Let's see, my best seller, uh, I didn't sell any Mushroom Boys, none. There is, there's kids there, but it's not overly kids. It's more, there's, I would say 75% adults, maybe even 85% adults. There wasn't a lot of kids. Um, but the most of one thing I sold was the rattles. And I wanna talk about the rattles. So, I got a question on, how do you do the rattles? Where's the videos? Well, I wanted to tell you that when I first seen the rattles, they were on Timu. And I said, oh my God, what is that? And so I, I ordered one. And I got it. And I forget which one it was. Might have been the bunny. Yeah, it was the bunny. I don't know why I'm thinking. So it was the bunny, and I think it was $8. And I said, oh my God, that's so cute when I got it, and I realized what it was. And I thought, well, I can't really put it on my booth and say it's mine, because in the back of my mind, if I have something on my booth and someone looks up the item and they see that it's from China, well, you know, I wanna keep doing craft shows, so I don't wanna put out something that's not mine. So, in order for me to put out that one rattle to get to selling, get it out, I have to then make other rattles to go with it. Because you're not just going to put out one thing. Yes, you can put out one thing because I have a lot of one-of-a-kinds. But, I mean, like, if I want to have rattles at my booth, I want to be able to make them. So, what did I do? Well, first, I had to see if it was feasible for me to make them. So I started digging. I went on to Etsy. Now Etsy has um, someone puts the names, like they must use like a, not a wood burner, like a Glowforge type thing. Um, 
I don't know what it's called, like a laser. They must use a laser, and they engrave the child's name for $15. So those are probably something that they buy from China at a wholesale. And Timu for $8, It's they only sell them for $15 on Etsy, so I don't think that it would be worth their time to buy an $8 one. And then, so they must find them somewhere. So that was really, that was really neat, by the way. So then I, I went, and I'm like, ah, I'll go see if I can find um, better patterns. But there are patterns on Etsy that I'm finding more now. So, but what started me was I, I found a site called A More Crafty Life. And that's with the A in front of it. A More, M-O-R-E, CraftyLife.com. And from there, they actually had rattle patterns. And then from there, then you can click on all different things. So I went to Ravelry. And on Ravelry, there is an awesome, like, bat one. I thought that was pretty cool. And you'll find the elephant ones that I have. You'll find the fox ones that I have. And you'll find the bunnies. I am not doing any more rattles. I know. I know. They're just, um, it's... I realize that, that I get $20 for them and I can do it while I'm sitting at work, but they're too tiny for me. I don't want to do anything more tiny. So I think I have three left. Yeah, I think I have three left. I think I had eight. I might have had nine. So I have three or four left. The rings. The rings I got on Amazon and I got them as labeled as macrame rings. I'm. If you go on Amazon, there's a shit ton of rings but I got the macrame rings and I'm sure I could have gotten them bigger but I didn't also check out Pinterest if you're looking for the rattles because there's a lot of good ideas there and there's like Santa Claus ones and the bunnies are really cute they're pretty simple the rattles themselves you can also get on Amazon excuse me I'm sorry, my phone was buzzing away. The rattles you can get on Amazon. So what I did was I took a piece of cheesecloth, I put the stuffing in there, and then I put the the rattle itself, the jing jing jingling, and I got like Christmas Christmas balls, and I put them in there, and I tied that really good, and then that went inside of the um, you know as you make the bunny, it comes to the bottom. You start by crochet. Uh, crocheting on the macrame ring with the ring of your choice and then as you build from the bottom up then you can put your thing in and then close it so that's what I did I figured that if I'm using a breathable substance such as cheesecloth the stuffing isn't going to get out but then if the kid when they get it all slimy from teething not slimy but wet and stuff nothing's gonna it's very porous so if they get it wet it's going to dry it's made of thread, cotton thread, so everybody can, you know, running under water. And it's a soft wood. It's bamboo wood. So it's it's very soft wood, so it's not going to hurt. So the question is, did I record during the show? I tried to. I had good intentions to, but no, I didn't. I'm sorry. I did one part. I did, but there was... So many people in there, and people were playing radios at their, you know, like Christmas music, and everybody was talking, and yeah. So I think that in criticism of the show, it was a lovely show. It was at the Aqua Turf in Southington. It was a nice show. There was an, a nice assortment of people. Somebody was there with, um, there. It was in Connecticut, so they had. Uh, this massive booth and they had a press with them like a t-shirt press and then if you told them your city in that state they would stamp you out a pillow that said all the different things like if if one was say Boston it would say Boston and then it would say uh, Dunkin Donuts or Fenway or you know it would say stuff like that or something from Dorchester it would say all those things I don't know Connecticut just I like I know where the Plainville is where where plants uh, Plainsville is where we were and I know that um, they have a couple of casinos out there so 
I don't know what they would say, but someone had that. I thought that was really inventive because people were buying as gifts for other people say that they were visiting family and or they wanted to buy their mother something. Maybe they live in Uncasville and she wants a, a cushion for her couch. It has all like the different things at Uncasville and I thought that was really neat. And jewelry. Khaleesi, Khaleesi came with me. She was so cute. She went from me around the corner to her papa who was stamp he was taking the money for admission so she would stamp the hands for him and that would be the only place I would let her go and then my sister-in-law was at the end of the aisle but I couldn't see the end of the aisle there was like eight vendors in between us and she was across from me on the other corner but I couldn't let Khaleesi go because I couldn't see through the people and I think that's that's what my problem is, is where I was set up. I was right in front of the door. Like, when you came in, you didn't see me. You had to come around the corner to see me. Not only that, because I was the very first booth, everyone thought, hey, you know, let's look around and see what else there is. So the next time I want to be off in there, I have to make sure that I do, that I, I bring everything. And my husband said, I could make, because... Take a step back. Next weekend is another show in Mansfield, Mass. I like to do it with my leftover, and right now I'd be going crazy over it because I sold a lot of things. My things aren't too expensive, but um, my daughter is going to a concert with her husband, and I said I would babysit, not really thinking of it. So that's next weekend. The weekend after that, there there is no more craft shows for me. So I'm at the end of it. So no more vendors set up for me. So I said to my husband, because my mother-in-law wants him to work that show next week, and I said, will you bring my booth with you? And he goes, oh, yeah, I want to sit there and run, and run a booth that doesn't sell anything. And I said, you could bring the whole booth. And he's like, well, if it was up to me, I'd make a much better booth. I said, go, go ahead. Yeah, but he's not. I don't even think he's going to go work the craft show. And... The thing is, is that I, I'm really only watching the kids Saturday night, so I could get up and go to the crowd show on Sunday morning, but I don't think I will. So, if I was the only crocheter there, I definitely would have sold out, but I don't expect to be the only crochet person somewhere, nor would I want to put that limitation on, like, a promoter. If you can sell the spaces sell the spaces I, everyone is different so my style is different so yeah that's it that's my market reveal so I didn't do that bad I mean 500 and what did I make 542 dollars that's that's good money and I didn't have to pay for the hotel and I didn't have to pay this for the spot if I had to pay for the hotel and if I had to pay for the spot, it might have been different, but I didn't have to, so I never would have went the night before, so I wouldn't have had a hotel. And then we stayed that night, we had to stay to do advertising for a show on December 10th, and when we went to the the place where it was, it was not good enough for a craft show. There really, there wasn't enough space, so that show has been canceled, which makes this past Sunday of my last video not my last video my last vendor market so I can't do anything on Dece the weekend of December 2nd because I'm babysitting for the concert which might actually be Sunday night maybe that's why I can't do the craft I, I know she told me I couldn't do the craft show but it might be Sunday night which would make more sense anyway the following weekend is Khaleesi's birthday and we are having a party here. Yay. So that would be good. We have a magician coming and a face painter coming. And we have games. It's going to be fun. So that's it for this video. Um, the rattles, if you make some or use any of those sites, leave a comment below and show us what you made. Because I love that. I love them at first. But it, it is very tedious work for me. Right now, I'm working on, I want to make Khaleesi a unicorn hat. So far, I've used a free pattern and two paid-for patterns on Etsy. 
one paid for pattern I started and realized this ain't for me. The free pattern I haven't tried yet and I'm on the second crochet pattern. They called for a K hook with four ply worsted weight and the holes were way too big. So I'm using a smaller hook. So we'll see how that goes and that's it. So I hope that you've made it this far to the video and I hope you like it and subscribed and leave me comments because I love comments. You know, it makes me feel like everybody's watched and I hope you stick around and if you hit the notification, it'll tell you when I upload another video. So that's it for my market. Have a great scrumptious day and I'll see you next time. Bye.